Yesterday we looked at LP source diversity. Basically, if you have $100 million worth of tokens and 30% of that is held by one address, that's a lot of risk. Today, we're going to be looking at, all right, if you have the WEATH USDC a Uniswap V2 pair, how much USDC is in this pair's reserves compared to all of the other pairs reserves of USDC. So if it's a really high amount, then that probably means that this pair is much more important. If it's a low amount, maybe it's less important. We'll find out. You could use the net balance of like USDC and WEATH, similar to how we calculated it for the LP token pairs, but there's actually another event that's emitted after every function call in the pair that Jackie's gonna walk you through and that we're gonna use for tracking balances because it's much more accurate. So without further ado, Jackie, take it away. Thanks, Andrew. So to get the reserve information, aka the information of the token amount in a particular pool or a pair, we need to look at the sync event table, which is emitted each time reserves are updated via the mint, burn, swap, or sync function calls. In general, the approach is we are going to do a division of reserves in a particular pool divided by the total reserves of that token in Uniswap v2. So we need to get all the pairs in Uniswap v2 and the latest reserve status. For example, how much USDC is in the USDC wrapped ETH pair and how much wrapped ETH is in the USDC wrapped ETH pair. So we first get the latest reserve status for that particular pair. And then we're gonna sum up the reserves per token across all the pairs. So that means we're gonna sum up how much USDC is in all of Uniswap V2's pairs. And then with those two information, we put the USDC in a particular pool divided by all of USDC in all of Uniswap V2. And then we'll get our percent of liquidity of each token. Besides using the main pair event sync table, we'll also be using the factory event pair created tables per usual to get the token address in this pair. And then we'll be using the tokens.erc20 table to get the token symbol and decimals per usual. All right, so let's get into the query. Let's just write down our logic. So we want to take the latest reserve of a token in a pair and then divide that by the total reserves of a token across Uniswap v2. Okay, step one, we're going to find the latest reserve of a token in a pair, which we are going to find from the sync function, right? So we're going to find Uniswap v2 pair filter for the event. And then we are going to look at the sync event table function. So doing a select from aliasing the sync table as s. Let's grab the time to just check. So event block time. And we are going to get the contract address uh, as our pair. And then we are also going to get the reserve amount. So s s dot reserve one we are going to uh, apply a windows function to help us find the latest reserve information that is emitted so for this we're going to use the row number windows function over how are we partitioning our window we are partitioning by per contract because we want to see the latest reserve info per contract right and then because we are interested in the latest we have to order by the event block time in a descending order and we also need to do the event index in a descending order so that will be our recency column we know that we need to take the latest one so at some point we need to be like where recency is equal to one but we're going to do that later now we need to uh, join it by the pair created event to grab the token address so that we can keep joining on the tokens.erc20 to table to find the correct decimals to adjust for and also the symbol so let's get 
these joint going, which we are super familiar with already. So let's do a left join on the event creation, which we are going to find from here. We're going to call that PC. What are we joining it on? We are going to join on the PC.pair, right? Is equal to the contract address, okay? And then now we're ready to join on the tokens.erc20 table. So we're gonna call this token token zero. And then we are joining on the tokens contract address is equal to the pair created token zero that we have just grabbed by joining the event pair created table. Then we're going to repeat the same process for token one in this pair. So we're going to aliases at tk underscore one dot contract address is equal to pc dot token one. Okay, so after that, we are ready to come back to our part to the middle part to adjust forgot a comma. And then we are going to do PC dot token zero as a token zero address. And then we're going to try to see if we have a symbol associated with this token zero. Similarly, we're going to apply the same for token one. So PC dot token one as token one address and then tk1 dot symbol as tk1 symbol okay awesome and then now we are ready to adjust for the reserve as we know we need to first cast it to be a double because right now it's a varchar and then after we cast that we are going to divide by the correct decimal so it's uh 10 to the whatever decimal, but sometimes decimal don't exist. So we are going to, as usual, apply a coalesce function. If it's null, then it's gonna be the default 18. Uh, but if we can find anything, then we are going to use that decimals info. And this would be our reserve zero. And then applying the same for reserve one. So as the reserve one as double, and then going to find tk one's decimal and then calling that reserve one. Lastly, let's just filter for the USDC wrapped ETH pair for now. Then the mid 10 to see. Okay, looks like we have some results. So the latest 1722 has the uh, lowest recency being one. So that is as expected. And let's just check on the amount quickly. Checking on this USDC wrapped ETH. Yeah, we should have 35275 of wrapped ETH ish. 35275 and then 41440. 41440. It's about the same. It's slightly different. Okay, cool. Let's move on to grab the recency being one. We need to put uh, this in a sub query and then we can filter on top of it. So we're going to do a select star from and Then we're gonna put this inside And then format it a little nicer, okay, you have to name a sub query So we are just going to call this sub query a Now is a part where we can use this where recency is equal to one so that would be the taking the latest reserve of a token in a particular pair. Then we are going to create a CT for this. So with reserves as so that would be our CT. And I'm gonna also format it. And then we are going to delete this part because that was a sanity check we would need reserves across all the pairs. So if we just limit it to the USDC wrapped ETH pair at this point, then we wouldn't be able to find the reserves from all the other swap pairs. So we are going to delete the where clause for the pair. If we do a sanity check, limit to 10, we should get 10 different pairs. 
Okay, looks like it finished. Let's see if it matches our expectation. So we have different pairs. Okay, awesome. And then we have different things exist in this pair. And then the recency is all one. And sometimes we cannot find a matching symbol. All right, cool. We are good. Sanity check passes. Let's move on. So here we just done is we got all the pairs and the total reserve, so the current reserve of each token. And then the next step, we are going to sum up the reserves per token across all of Uniswap V2. So we are going to select from the reserves. All right. And then we're going to take each one at a single time. So we're going to do token zeros address as our token address because we're trying to generalize it. Essentially, USDC or wrapped ETH, right? You can see here already, wrapped ETH could exist on either as a token zero or a token one. So we have to consolidate the zero and one column together when it's the same token. So we're going to need a uh, union on both tables. So we're going to do token zero address as the token address, right? And then obviously associate with token zero was the reserve zero amount. So that's going to become our reserve. And then we're naming it like this because later on when we do this joint, right? We said that we want to do a union all, union all. So it has to be the same column name. Otherwise you cannot do this. So we are going to get the info for token one or reserve one, and then we're going to union them together. All right. So once we have this information, though, uh, we are going to put it as a query so that we can sum it up. Right. So we are basically trying to select from this and we are going to sum up the reserve, right, as reserves. Right. And then we are summarizing, summing up it per token address. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. And then we're going to put this inside of here and then format it a little nicer. And then here again, we have to name the subquery. So we're going to call it T. And then from this subquery, we are grouping by the token address to find the sum. So we're going to say group by one. So that's what we will do. That's again, limited by 10 here to do a sanity check. We have some results, reserves per different token. Makes sense. Now we are ready to join and divide. So we're now gonna make another CTE and then we're gonna name token total reserves. Us. And then we are going to put this in. And then we are ready to join and divide. So select from um and then we are going to select from this reserve here from reserves aliasing that as r okay and then we are going to again do it like we did here so we're gonna do it for token zero first and then do it for token one and then we are going to do a union so that they appear on two different rows doing token zero first so going to a left join on this token total reserves and then we're gonna token total reserve and then that would be to our token total reserve zero then we're gonna do ttr zero dot y we're gonna join on the token address equals to the token zero address then here would be where we are filtering for the address because in the two previous CTE, we were able to get the right information across all the pairs, right? Like all the USDC that exists across all the pairs. So now is the time that we can actually filter on a particular pair. So we're going to do r dot pair is equal to this pair address for USDC rough teeth. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Awesome. Okay, so now what do we need? We need first the pair, and then we also need to grab the token. We're gonna try to grab the token symbol. Token symbol, and then if we cannot get the symbol, then we will grab the token address. Token zero address. Okay, so that is our token. 
and then we are going to get the reserve so reserve zero is what we're looking at as our reserves and then we are going to grab the total reserve for this token right total reserves uh, as all reserves and then we are going to divide that this is what we've been working up to total zero dot reserve reserves okay so this is our percent of all the reserves okay that would be for our token zero and then now on to token one we're going to do a union all like before and this would be the reserves and then here we're gonna call it total token reserve one one is equal to token one okay and then pair would be the same and here we're going to grab token one symbol if not get the address name that is token and then grab the reserve one amount and then the total reserve for that particular token and then doing the division again okay let's run it and see okay so no results from the quarry why is that aha forgot to delete this uh qa line okay let's run it again because in that limit 10 that we grabbed it didn't contain usdc repteeth looks like we have our result this is how much wrapped ETH is existing in this pair, so let's QA check this. Okay, so we're expecting about 31 million USDC and 35,000 wrapped ETH. So 41 million USDC and 35,000-ish wrapped ETH. Okay, cool. Let's create a table visualization. Okay, so we are going to call this summary table for the uh, pair right so first here we can hide the pair address table so we click hide column and then it's going to be gone and then this is our token which is the tokens in pair right let's make it more legible and then so here is our reserves so reserves and then let's format it to be a little prettier so 0.00a would be that and then we can put our reserves in uh, across pairs same trio make it prettier and then this is the percent right so we would do percent of uh, all reserves right and then let's format it nicer to be 0.00 percent so that is a uh, interesting sorry 0.00 percent here and then yay that is the answer for day nine thank you jackie i think we all understand reserves a lot better now and it's really interesting to see just how much of the reserves is in the usdc with pair it's more than i expected if you want to take this question a step further you should figure out what percent of usdc total supply is in uniswap right because the number of USDC tokens in Uniswap could be maybe a billion, but there's billions worth of USDC tokens in total, right? So that could be an interesting way to extend your analysis. For tomorrow, we're going to be taking the reserves analysis a little further and say, based on the reserves at any given point, what is the slippage? Meaning if I want to swap tokens of a certain volume, how close will the amount of tokens I get out be to the quoted rate? So see you in the next one. Bye.